Can you see me now? Yeah, I can see you now, John. <laughs> John uh, is having a few internet issues, but it's Natalie here, uh, all for United. I think John's in there. Um, here, Catherine Batty. Um, Catherine, welcome to all for United. Obviously, it's been a while in the planning, but uh, we've got you here and uh, just really happy to have you on. Do you want to tell the guests a bit about yourself, people that are watching, if they've never heard of you and who you write for and sort of your experience in women's football? Yeah, th oh. yeah thank, well, thank you for having me. Um, I wore my red jumper especially uh, just for the show. Um, so, yeah, I, I work for Mail Online, cover, um, I cover, cover all sports there, but I, I focus on, on women's football, obviously. Um, started working at the Mail officially in September 2019, but as part of my kind of role, I went on a five-month placement to the Liverpool Echo, um, covered Liverpool and Everton women while I was there, and then came back to the Mail and, and sort of picked up the, the WSL. And then, well, when I came back to the Mail, the season kind of uh, got cut off because of COVID, and then yeah. um, obviously we restarted again last year. And, um, yeah, so I've just been, been working there since then and, um, yeah, really enjoying it and, and happy to be here on this show. Brilliant. And I mean, obviously, I don't I don't know how if you've seen this show before, how much you've seen of sort of Man United women, because I know you said you were at Liverpool and Everton. But, you know, um, when we play Liverpool, it's good games. When we always play Everton, they're always good games. Um, and obviously, pre-COVID, when fans could come in, uh, they were definitely good games. What, should, what have you made of United basically starting, uh, forming a team, and then just basically everything this summer? It's interesting because um, when I was doing my, my journalism masters at, at Sheffield Uni, that year was the first year of Man United's first season uh, when they were in a championship and I went to watch them play Sheffield United and it always sticks in my mind because there was obviously more Man United fans there than there were Sheffield fans. You were probably at the game yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I can remember obviously the crowd. It, it felt like a really kind of electric atmosphere just because of how many United fans were there and, you know, all the singing and stuff. And that was like the first time I watched United and um, they were obviously very impressive in the championship, very, you know, clearly a, a step above the other teams. And then, you know, they, they come into the WSL and have done extremely well. Um, first two seasons, you have to hand it to, to Casey Stoney for the, you know, the way she assembled her squad and actually not just broke into that top four, but really did push the, that established top three that have been there for a long time. Um, you know, it was it was a shame that it just missed out last season, but you know, we know that they weren't too far away. So I think I've been very impressed, and uh, was lucky enough to be, be there at the Old Trafford game against West Ham. And hopefully, now we can have fans back in, we'll get a game there with with supporters in because I think that would be a great atmosphere as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember that uh, that first game that you're talking about. Definitely that Sheffield game, and you know. So a couple of fans have ended up watching Sheffield because they had a lot of players on loan there and you know I think it's just it's the way it's grown John's back in John you're doing all right sorry guys I don't know what happened last couple of, <laughs> last couple of, last couple of shows my internet's just gone down uh, it's never happened for like yeah. a year but it's happening now guys carry on I'll just join yeah, in um, yeah so we're just talking about Catherine's journey and her watching us against Sheffield in the championship really good game and obviously yeah West Ham at Old Trafford, we're looking forward to hopefully. I think they will because it would be right to to have it full with fans. And I think, I mean, what's your opinion? Do you think that it could break the records? Obviously, we've seen it with the, the with the Manchester derby, uh, Tottenham derby, and then potentially if if you do a Man United, Man City, or you know, if Liverpool came up, I think I could see definitely you know fifty thousand and stuff. I can see it rocking um, on on a bigger level. 100%, yeah, I think, you know, you look at those records that are in place from um, the, the Tottenham and the Arsenal game and obviously the, the game that was at the Etihad. I mean, you know, Man United took a lot of fans to the Etihad as well and actually, you know, in, in the away end and made, made that a great atmosphere as well. You know what United support is like and I think during normal times you'd probably get people coming over from abroad to watch the game but because of the, you know, this, we don't know kind of how that situation is going to pan out, you know, throughout the year, might make that a bit more tricky but as you say in, in normal circumstances you'd probably attract, you know, people from all over the world but 100% I think it'd be great if we could have that, have a game there this season and, and really kind of get it as full as possible. Yeah, I think definitely. I think we know a lot of people from all over the world, Indonesia, India, they come on this show, uh, Sweden, 
um Norway, especially okay. since we've got two two um Norwegian signing, I can definitely see definitely no Norwegian people are gonna cut me coming over this some this, you know, when hopefully everything going well they can come over. So no, definitely we're expecting a lot of fans over from abroad as well as, you know, Manchester locals coming down to LSB. Um I'm seeing a lot of people mentioning signings and I know that's what uh, a lot of people tune into the Thursday <laughs> show show for. And obviously, um Catherine, I started chatting to you when you put out a tweet in relation to Matilda. Uh, they've unfortunately finished for today. But uh, Kia Simon, uh, you obviously said and wrote an article about LJ at the time. Obviously, Lauren James is gone now. But Man United were looking at her in terms of um, a replacement. And I think at the start, a lot of people were, were a bit didn't know about her and were upset. Then we've had people come on and talk about her. And obviously, now we've seen her in the Olympics. I think a lot more people are behind that can you sort of shed any light or what you can on sort of Kia Simon and if you're aware of anything uh, regarding her future well she's she's a player that's attracted a lot of interest from WSL clubs I know um, obviously you follow Emma Sanders and I think she put out that she was very very close to joining Aston Villa had it had a deal agreed um, before another another club came in and I know Emma's reported that that West Ham are one of her clubs interested as well um, my understanding was that United had her on the list with, you know, the idea they knew Lauren James was probably going to leave. And I think, as I put it, perhaps maybe a few people took the wrong way as, as, as to say a replacement for Lauren James, because obviously they're not quite like for like. And obviously the age, there's an 11-year age difference between the two. Um, and obviously, you know, Keir Simon brings a lot more experience. Lauren James was, you know, a player that's going to be, be there for the future kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the, the thing for United is, obviously, they were looking at her, that was when you didn't have a manager. Mark Skinner obviously coming in, we don't know kind of who, who he's got his eye on, whether he wants to bring his own players in. Um, and, and a lot of the players United obviously signed, you know, before Mark, Mark was appointed. Um, as well, I think, they've probably had this list from when Casey Stoney was there as well. Um, especially Martha Thomas, because I know Martha Thomas is a player that Casey really liked. Um, she always spoke very highly of her in press conferences. I kind of got the idea that if Casey had, had stayed, Martha, she probably would have got after Martha Thomas anyway. Um, so I feel like they've kind of worked their way through the targets that they, they maybe had you know, before, before the regime change. Um, and yeah, obviously Simon was one that they were considering. Um, still, probably, as I understand, considering, but there is competition, and if you know, if you're slow, and again, I don't know if the situation has changed with Mark coming in, um, but definitely, I would, you know, expect her to see her in a WSL this season. It's just um, unsure as to where, which direction she'll be going. No, I mean, how do you feel? The I think the fan base is changing for the positive idea because when, when Simon's name was first first come out, everyone was like, oh no, Simon, you know, not good enough. You know, Ben Gilby, one of our class friends who's really um, keen on the Matildas, uh, obviously defended her. We we got to know a little bit about her as well. But we put out tweets today and it looked at everyone in the, in the comments now. They were all jumping on board. There was would have probably seen her in the Olympics. Um, would have obviously, obviously she's playing in a position where we're quite light at the moment on, on up front and especially on the right wing. I think the fan base is kind of changing and I think that we're kind of learning a bit more about these players. Um, and I think it's great signing, not just even um, squad depth, but even maybe a potential start at 11. But what are your thoughts over the last couple of months? Um, Nat, how, how yeah, and I, and I think it's Catherine, like what she said. I think it's at the time when she reported it, it was, we were linked to Martha Thomas as well. And I know she said about like sort of Martha Thomas being, being a Casey signing. And I think it was all Casey signings. No one knew who the manager was, whether the manager would like these signings. And I think what sort of did her a disservice was, and I, I jumped and then someone's told me, you were saying this, and I, I was, I admit, I wasn't keen. And I think it's because it's, you know, we were selling LJ, Tobin and uh, Kristen had gone, and then we were linked to, to her. And I think the fact that Villa had a deal done, and then we're hearing about West Ham, and you just think, when you don't know of, of the player, you, you do hear those names that are competing, and you think, why are we why are we there and then obviously she had a bad injury at psv and then you thought injuries injuries we've had a lot of injuries we don't want a player who's just coming off an injury 
But for me, I think her World Cup, she has been a standout player. And uh, I know you, you put out some, uh, she's playing mainly on the wing and she did an assist today, really good. All the creativity is coming through her mainly, setting up Sam Kerr, uh, Kerr raves about her, you know. So I think that's, that's just it. And I think probably with the women's game, you don't get to see a lot of these players. And so then you just have to rely on sort of what you're being told. And then... Um, you know, like I said, I think it was Aston Villa punching above their weight potentially um, in sorting a deal for her. That would have been a great signing for them. And then obviously, in terms of United fan, you think, are we shopping in, in a market with Aston Villa or are we trying to, you know, progress ourselves? But then when you watch her in the in the W in the Olympics, you do see that she's a good player. I mean, Catherine, I want to what I've just said. What do you think when play when fans do see like you know Lauren James was lit, name was saying as a not a replacement but obviously you know that that's sort of how it went. People saw it as that, um, and then obviously you know with the West Ham and the Villa, could you understand fans getting frustrated or do you think no they should have should have been a bit more patient potentially? No, I I, I understand because you know as you're saying, it's we have a very difficult. Um, limited access to, to other leagues to watch players. You only get to watch um, players that are playing abroad really when when you know when World Cups come around. Uh, when was the last time you know we watched we had you know we were able to watch Australia regularly, you know, before the Olympics. Uh, not very often, you know, obviously we see Sam Kerr week in, week out in the WSL and, and various other Australian players, but this is a player that people probably didn't know too much about. Um, but she is a player that's got you know 100 caps for Australia, very very experienced, played in different leagues, um, and I, I think would be a, you know a very good addition to any team in the WSL uh, because of her experience. But I, I understand why fans get frustrated because as you were saying, you know you see Laston Villa, West Ham being linked, and you know, obviously you don't want to disrespect these teams, but United, they sh you know they, they've got to be aiming you know above above them. Um, United finishing fourth, trying to break into that top three, and if you've got obviously the you know clubs that were sort of competing in, in a relegation battle into this play, I, I can understand why fans might be a little bit confused. But as you say, it's very difficult to to know you know what these players are about when when you, you you're just going off you know what what you know of other clubs going for them and not actually being able to watch the player players live. You could argue as well that it could be like West Ham and Aston Villa who are actually punching above their weight, maybe. You know, mm. we're kind of thinking to ourselves, OK, West Ham and Villa obviously below us, so we shouldn't be messing around with those kind of players. However, on the flip side, maybe they're looking at progressing themselves and they're looking at players maybe potentially above what they should be looking for. So you can kind of slip it that way. But yeah, I, I, um, I agree that like when the name first came about, I agree with Natalie's point. The fact that we lost LJ, Tobin and Fest and then all of a sudden this name got linked. Yeah, you can completely understand it, can't you? But I think now, looking back, I don't think who's ever going to get a signing, signing as good as Fess and Heath again. Um, LJ, obviously, the start of her career and loads of fans at United, so it's kind of a completely different. Now, I think we should be looking at someone a bit more experienced who's got some got something about her and also got a bit of bit of presence around the box and we've been speaking to other fans about her as well and they all speak highly of her. I think people who know a bit about the WSL and women's football in general do speak highly of her. It's mainly a lot of like United fans who mainly don't know much about her, who read, read the stats and look at her history, like the teams that she's played for. It's um, those are the ones, that's been, that's been a bit of conflict, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just touching on the Olympics, you know, you can't get into the Matildas and get as far as the, as the did play pretty much every game in the same position and not be a good player. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Nath? Not, any, not anyone can get to the Olympic semi-finals. Yeah, I think what you said about the teams that she's playing for, and I think it's the age as well. But I think we are at the stage where we do need that experience now. And I think potentially you could say that that sort of hindered us a bit um, the second half of the season. Things weren't going well. And obviously we've heard about what was happening behind the scenes. But I think... When things like that are happening, uh, an experienced head or more experienced heads will be able to sort of pull you through it. Um, yeah, the loss of Jess. I think I think a lot of like key Amy Turner as well. I think these are all like fans' favourites, and I think it's just as well potentially women. You know, Man United fans getting used to women's football. Like these players aren't going to stay around forever. It's always going to be sort of developing the squad. And yeah, I think we are at the stage now where we're adding. You know, we've been used to like young young players coming in, but I think we're adding like the more experience. So we might see a few um, older, 25, 27, 
um you know 30 because i think k is a 31 i think or, or around that age so i think we will we'll start seeing more of that because i think that's what we've missed from last year and i think you know like you said west ham and, and aston villa are punching because they were down near the bottom and they don't want to be near the bottom again so let's bring in someone experienced and like you said she's she had a great um olympics for me she's she's put herself up there and you know because i i've heard like what um Catherine was saying about the whole west ham but i've heard it's not not fully fully done yet so i'm guessing she's she's out of contract she's she's a free agent so she's be, be looking for the best deal for herself as well i'm guessing um Catherine, just a quick one for yourself obviously we're united fans so we obviously mm -hmm. um phase uh ella Toon up and kirsty hansen um those are the positions that i think potentially keir simon could be Looking at Ty Hansen on the right wing, Tooney, you know, maybe like just behind Sorry. the forwards, a bit more of a creative striker more than an out and out striker. Just what are your thoughts on a couple of our youngsters, Ella Toon and Kirsty Hansen? Really like Ella Toon. I really like Kirsty Hansen as well, to be fair. Um, I know Kirsty Hansen is Scottish international, I'm half Scottish, so, um, you know, I was actually to see the Scottish players doing well. Uh, Ella Toon has, I think, it got such a bright future um, to be doing as well as she has done at, at such a young age. And to be holding down in a, you know that position that team playing week in week out, um, and you know the fact that she's been picked in England squads already. She's you know she's been picked for the Olympics. You know the Olympic squad was only very small, and, and you look at some of the players that missed out, and she's you know she was in it. So yeah, I, I think both of them are, are fantastic, especially Ella too. And I think as, as you say, you know, I think she's got a really really bright future. I think just just to sum up then, I'll just ask Natalie as well, and I'll, I'll answer it. And Catherine, you could answer it. if she did start, if she did join um, United, uh, could could you see her kind of getting in ahead of Tooney or ahead of Russo up front or ahead of Hanson? Natalie, do you want to try to start on that one? Well, I, I suppose oh, no. just jumping on that though. What in your show yesterday with Richard Laverty? I think he made a very good point. It's not just about choosing the best player; it's about choosing the best player for that particular game or that particular situation. So I think Richard did make a good point yesterday, but I'll let you answer that. I one. think I think depends who you're playing against. In my opinion, it depends if you're playing against um, if you need her to, you know, you know, maybe if you're playing against Chelsea and City, you'd play Keir Simon. But maybe if you're playing against Birmingham and Reading, you play Kirsty Hansen. I, mm. I don't know. I'm just thinking of like. You know, for example, because obviously you want the experience in those games. In those games, they're tight. You know, they're against the top three. They're very tight. You've got to stick to your game plan. I'm not saying that the younger girls don't, but you've got to, you know, execute it to the to the T. And I think sort of uh, we've seen in these uh, Olympic games, you know, creating assists, uh, creating chances, taking goals. And that's, that's what you need when it's high pressured. Um, and sometimes our, our young ones, which, you know, obviously... They're getting that experience. They've not got it yet, and you're not going to see them maybe perform week in, week out, all the time. Um, so you know, maybe that's what I'd choose. I'd choose the the Kia for, say, you know, City, Chelsea, but then maybe um, Hanson for Everton, Reading, or something like that, and just help those girls build up and learn always off of it. Because I think they learned so much off Tobin and Kristen, but. You know, I was saying to I sort of bumped into Deb and Mark today, and they, I was saying Tobin and Kristen are the right players, but maybe it wasn't the right time, um, because I think we've we've had, you know, if we had had a bit more experience as well as Tobin and Kristen, who knows where we could have been? We could have won the league. You know, adding them in is is league winning games, but we're just not there, and um, unfortunately, you know, we just fell short by a point. But I think, you know, we're, we're basically there third i always say this we're basically third but we're not we just need that little bit of experience and obviously arsenal had that experience we need to to either keep learning and getting it or you know bringing in these experienced players yeah i just let Catherine kind of have her last say on on the on keir simon uh i, I think as you're saying it, it does depend what games you're playing and i agree with natalie on in that sense i think if you, if she was to come in, you'd pro, you know she'd probably be starting those big games. But also, you know, a squad like United, you need a lot of options in those positions. You you know you need composition. Look at Chelsea. You know, you look at the squad depth of Chelsea. You, you look at the bench that they sometimes had last season. 
you need you need you need strong players on the bench. You need to be able to completely you know switch around your, your forwards from one game to the next to give people a rest to compete in to compete in all the competitions. So uh, you know, squad depth hugely hugely important. Yeah, um, it definitely is. And I think I was on with Rich Lafferty uh, last night. Go and check it out, guys, back in the video. And it's on Twitter as well. But we were just talking about, yeah, having that depth, looking at Chelsea's bench, looking at Chelsea and Arsenal playing, and they've still got sort of world-class players, even though half the team is out in um, the, the Olympics, Tokyo, or coming back. And I think that's what we need. That's what we're missing. I think definitely in attack, that's what we're missing. I know um, you've, you've talked about uh, Martha Thomas and Casey and always bringing her up and... Um, I just want to get your views, really, Catherine, on, on Martha Thomas. I don't know how much you watch of her and how much you know of her and just just how you think she's going to do at, at Man United. She's one, again, where we had some West Ham fans on and they're really upset, but at the same time, they sort of can see why, because she had a lot of injuries and, you know, when um, Ollie Harder came in, she they don't think maybe she fits his style as much. Um one of the West Ham fans said it could be another Jane Ross, but she doesn't know. Um, obviously, as United fans, we won um, a lot of goals. I think that's where we missed out. You know, we didn't score enough. Do you think that she, you know, she's wearing number nine? I think a lot will be expected of her. You know, Man United number nine. People expect them to score goals. What, what's your opinions? And do you think she's going to do well next season, Martha? Well, I think she's got. She's one of those strikers that's got so much potential. But um, she's a confident striker. That's what I've noticed when I've when I've seen her. When she first came to West Ham, she got off to a brilliant start. You know, she looked really kind of clinical in the box. Uh, was doing really well. And then West Ham went through a bit of a difficult patch under Matt Beard um, towards the end of towards the end of the season, and then obviously the start of last season. They went through a bit of a difficult patch and um, she seemed to lose a lot of confidence. I don't know if you guys watched any of that West Ham documentary, but I did I did have a little watch of it. And I think there's a moment in there, you know, when she actually kind of broke down and, and was sort of saying how how you know how she didn't really feel confident. Um and she did struggle at times last season, but towards the end of last season she really kind of picked it up a little bit, you know, she got a few more goals. And it's it's all gonna be Markson is gonna have to basically really kind of Get her to the point where her confidence is sky high. If she has a good start, I think she could, you know, she could kick on and be that striker that United need. Um, but as you say, there is going to be a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure, and, and if it's a little bit of a slow start, it might, you know, it might be a little bit more of a difficult season. But so much potential. She's only she's only quite young as well. I think she's only about 23, 24. So she's definitely got a lot of room for improvement as well. But um, if you could get a, get a goal on, on the first game, and I think she'll, she'll, you know, she'll kick on from there. But as we say, I, th I think all strikers are confident strikers, but there's there's some way, it, you know, obviously it can it can affect them if they don't score for quite a while. No, I think we are, as fans are going um, like a, a little sign as well, haven't we? So like where we're at the ground, we need to show our love for these players and give them that confidence and cheer them on. And obviously, you know. We, we probably will show our frustrations in the ground if like they miss a couple of sitters or whatever but generally you know we, we will back our players more than most teams yeah. out there and you know we need to give it that confidence don't we? we need to give it that belief and know that we're behind them and i know a lot of united fans on twitter well as soon as someone gets signed but we're always in a good way you know we, we adopt them as soon as it, as soon as they've signed and and i think that's i think Catherine makes a good point there if she's a confidence player you know the fans need to do their bit as well don't they yeah, yeah, and I think she will experience. I think it's like you said, there will be that pressure because I think, you know, Man United number nine and, and you know, people who probably don't watch football will still sort of check in on, on don't watch women's football. I mean, we'll still check in on Man United women because it, it's Man United and they're Man United fans. And if they're looking to come, they they want to see, you know, I think, I think when you're doing well, more fans come down. If you're sort of going through a sticky patch, you might not get as many fans. Um, and I think it's, it's a situation that's happening with the women's game. You're seeing this sort of influx. And now I think we're seeing a steady influx of, like, more people wanting to learn, more people wanting to come. And, you know, you know, solid fans for, for life kind of thing, like supporting both teams. Um, but I still think there'll be sort of the more hardcore fans like me and you, John, probably going every week. And whereas there'll be people that will come in and out and maybe come for the derby. But I think definitely, like, you know, if, if there's big chances, and I suppose it's the big games... You want to see your number nine if they're through and goal, scoring that goal against City, you know, scoring that goal against Liverpool, Arsenal. 
Um, but I think, yeah, I think it's more about like you'll you'll be frustrated if they miss, but it's still like come on, geeing them up again, getting behind them, being behind them for the whole ninety minutes, singing the songs like Catherine said when she went down to Sheffield. You know, even whatever. I mean, it was kind of a simple game. I think they won like four nil, but it was like even at a point when it was passing it around at the back, you're still singing and you're still cheering and you're still having a good time and always letting them know that you're you're there supporting them. And I think. With every United fan, whenever I've been, men, women, under, you know, there's still that support there throughout constant. Um, and I think, you know, I think they know that, the players, and I think that they'll accept, expect it. Um, I want to talk about, like, United Summer and just Catherine's uh, thoughts on that, and then we'll move on to a few other teams as well. But before we do, I know I can't really have you on this show and talk about the Matildas and potential new signings and not mention uh, Kennedy. So I just wonder if you've heard anything about Alana Kennedy. Obviously, she's... Uh, doesn't play for Tottenham anymore. It's gone really quiet on uh, these Australian players, hasn't it? And I just wondered if you've heard anything, not just regarding Man United, but just anything in general about that player. I can't say I can't say I've heard anything about about Kennedy in particular. But again, she was a player that impressed the Tottenham last season. Was probably one of their best players. Has done very well in the Olympics. So she's again probably in a position where she's in a strong position because she's in good form. And she can kind of hold out and wait for the for the best offer that comes her way, um, and it and it just again it just depends if she's Mark Sinner's type of player or not. We don't really know. We, we we don't know about what what he's looking for, where he wants to improve, and whether she wants to come back to the WSL, whether she wants to you know, go back to go back abroad or somewhere else. So unfortunately, I can't say I uh, I know too much about her plans, but I'd love to see her back in the, in the WSL for sure because she was uh, like I say one of Tottenham's best players last season. Yeah, I think a lot of United fans want to see her join the club because we do think that we may be one defender short. So um, potentially that would be a fantastic signing, wouldn't it? Um, just, what are your thoughts on the summer um, signings that we made so far? Obviously, we've touched on Thomas, but what do you think about the rest? Because we have both five players in now. Um, I think it's been quite active. I think if you look at our squad now, I think our goalkeeper situation got stronger uh, with Bagley joining. I think um, Blundell went from Chelsea has obviously made our defence stronger and Mannion. Uh, Bob Reese has obviously made our midfield stronger. I think there's a lot of positivity there, and it's almost going under the radar a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I think Hannah Blundell, I know it's part of a Lauren, Lauren James deal, but um, and it's not like a like for like, you're not getting the same position back, but you've, you've got a player there that's you know had an experience of winning trophies, who will bring you know a lot of experience to that defence. And you mentioned Ethan Mannion as well. Um, I think I think she could be a brilliant signing, um, you know, not having to pay a fee for her because. When she was fit, she was arguably one of Man City's best defenders, probably probably their best defender because it was the season that Lucy Bryan wasn't there or anything like that. She was playing absolutely out of her skin until she got that you know horrible injury. And then I know she came back last season but didn't really play much football. And it's just going to be a case of whether she can get back to that level and how, how quickly she'll get she can get back to that level if she can. Because as I say, she you know, when she was fit, she was playing really well. She was on the cusp of England. Um, and if she can get back to those levels, that could be a really, really good signing for you guys, especially strengthening that defence because you've lost um, lost um, Amy. So, yeah, I think those two in the defence are really, really good signings. Now, would you kind of like lead towards that now? Because it seems like everybody is Man United and Millie is going to be our centre back pairing. Obviously, our full backs are really strong now as well. They'll come on leaps and, leaps and bounds. Yeah, obviously, I've I've not watched a lot of uh, Hannah Blundell. Um, you know, she was on Chelsea's bench, but what you do hear is positive. Um, you know, she, the way she even described herself, attacking fullback, I like to get forward, I like to be creating chances around the goal. So, for me, that's what I think we've missed. I think, for me, uh, last season, well, she got very player of the season on Abache, Um and that just sort of added a new lease of life to our team, the way she was sort of attacking forward and, you know, driving it forward. And I think having it the other side as well, which is just going to be beneficial, I think against, especially against like, you know, Reading or Birmingham and not, not trying to be disrespectful, but obviously these teams might come to LSV, sit back. We saw Reading did it, sit back, um, try and catch us on the counter. Whereas I think now if you've got sort of, the, the fullbacks pushing up, the wingers will push up. It's sort of like overload them um, a lot more. Uh, and, I, and I've seen a few of her goals. So she, she's got a shot on her. She can score. Um, so I'm, when when we were first linked to her in terms of the LJ deal, I was 
not disappointed, but I think I wanted a forward. I wanted, you know, mm. I think a lot of people said Beth England, Guru Wrighton, those kind of players. Um, I'm still quite shocked about Beth England because I am sl slightly worried for her and her Euro chances, you know, if she does spend the whole season on the bench, Lauren James has come in now. What's going to happen? Uh, we don't know. You know, she'll be wanting to make the Euros. I think she still might have a chance, but obviously she she will need to play, and otherwise someone will take her place, in in my opinion. Um, but you know, so when it was a, that that's the only area really now, John, that I'm a bit not worried, but I think uh, Skinner will sign players. It's just I suppose waiting. It's about a month left, and I think where we should be focusing is up front uh, strikers and wingers. Because of the rest, like you said, the depth is there now. It's just add, add a few strikers, add wingers. You know, there's going to be injuries. There's a lot of games. Get some wingers in, good quality. Put, pull through some young players as well from the under 21s. And yeah, I, I can see us being up there again. I think a lot of people have sort of written us off um, because of what happened, because of Casey leaving. But Mark, uh, I'm, 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 I'm still. Skeptical, but I think he will win win over fans. I think he is uh, the kind of guy that's that's going to do well. Hopefully, you mentioned about the wingers, and obviously we need a strength in depth of front. But that's going back to Keir Simon. Why not go all in for Keir Simon? Then, if that's the case, you know we've obviously had some sort of talk somewhere there because there's no smoke without fire. Not not in this situation. Too many people are talking about it. You know, it just kind of just makes make sense to me that you know surely if she's there to be taken, then just kind of. Go for it. Um, yeah, so just moving on then, Catherine. Just what are your kind of like expectations for next season for United then? Because as Natalie touched on, you know, our kind of uh, morale dropped a hell of a lot about a month ago up until about three or four months ago. But it's, it's kind of, we kind of won back round again now that we've got a new manager in and we've got, we've got that stability there. Can you, like as a bit of an outsider, like are you kind of like seeing United on the way back up again or do you kind of see them struggling next season? What are your thoughts on that one? Uh, it's it's difficult to be honest because we've, we've Mark Skinner and Scott, I think he knows he's got a job on his hands in terms of breaking into that top three. I know Arsenal have changed managers as well, so you know they're, they're going to have a changeover period. We don't, we don't know whether their manager will get up and running straight away. It's breaking, it's breaking the top two of Chelsea and City. I think it's going to be very, very difficult for anyone to really get close to Chelsea. I know City only finished a point behind them last season, but it did feel, it felt like they were a little bit further away. And I, I'm not sure about City this season as well. I think they've obviously lost a few players, a bit of a changeover, you know, a lot of pressure on Gareth Taylor this year to, to do more than just win the FA Cup because as, as much as it's a trophy, I think... The pressure is going to be on him to win the league now because it's been quite a while since City last won it. For United, again, it's all about really trying to break break into that top three, but also make sure there's try and bridge that gap between the teams below you. The only one I can really see that would be pushing to tr you know try and get in the top four would be Everton. Um, they were close close-ish last year, but there was still a significant gap. They're, they've got to try and narrow that gap to you guys. And you've got to try and increase it. Um, the thing for Mark is he knows there's going to be expectation now because two fourth place finishes, mm. that's the bare minimum. It, you know, you, you really have to be, if you want to progress and you want to move on, he knows he's got to try and get Champions League football um, again and hope, you know, the expectation would be to be able to win a trophy as well. Um, so... Obviously, um, out of last season's FA Cup, because it's been carried over, but there'll be a new FA Cup. Continental Cup is a good chance to try and win a trophy as well. Um, and it's just difficult with the two, the two new managers with Arsenal. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know an awful lot about the, the new Arsenal manager. Uh, I've done a little bit of research on him. I know he's done well in, um, in, 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 in Europe. Um, but it's obviously different coming over to England, whereas Mark skinner has got that experience. He's been in the WSL before. Um, of course, it's changed since he was here at Birmingham, but it's not been that long. So, you know, it was only 2019 he left. He does have that experience that, you know, um, the Arsenal manager doesn't have. So, as, as I say, to, to bring a long, long point um, to try and kind of conclude it, um, if I was a Manchester United fan, I'd be, I'd be disappointed with fourth again, as you were disappointed with fourth last season. It has to really be the top three this year. And I think Martin will know that coming in. Um, he'll know the expectation. 
And there's, there's no reason why you can't look at City and think we need to overtake them as well, because I don't think they were that far off from last season. It was just a case of they didn't lose many games. Um, they dropped they dropped points, they would draw, and that was the difference between you guys. Those games against Reading, those games against, you know, where he was dropping points and stuff. Um, City dropped points, but they didn't lose. Um, that was the kind of the difference. City had a fantastic end of the season. They had the second half of their season. They just went on this massive winning streak and they, they, they done quite well. They, they were as we obviously had the opposite. But and that is, it's good to see that we need to be focusing on the teams above us again and we're mm. not thinking about the teams below us. Obviously, we mentioned Everton there. We can, we can talk a bit about Everton right now because even though they have made some good signings and very adventurous and exciting signings, it's got the Man United fan base a little bit battled in some in some cases. Um, I still look at our starting eleven, and I still think that we are miles ahead. So, in my opinion, that if we could keep some of these players fit, and I know this is the biggest challenge for United to keep our players fit, but I mean, Catherine, do, do you still kind of look at us as favourites, provided our starting eleven's fit, uh, fit? Between you and Everton, yeah. yeah, I would say yeah, I'd say so because as well, I think Everton have still got a lot to prove um, in terms of actually beating the teams above them. That's something they you know failed to do last season. Struggled. You guys actually, you know, you went and drew with Chelsea on the opening day. We're very, very unlucky to lose away to them. Beat Arsenal at home. Um, drew with City at home. Everton, they're not able to take points off the teams above them. Um, and then they obviously the games that played against you, you obviously came out on top. Um, and that's something that Everton were, you know, they were fine playing the teams below them, beating them. But when it comes to playing the big teams, I don't know if it was a mental block in, in some aspects because I think they were very close to drawing with City away from home and then conceded a late goal. Um, but like I say, they've kind of got that to prove, whereas you guys have actually gone and beaten those teams. So you know you can compete with them. Whereas with Everton, I think there's still a little bit of a gap there in terms of competing with the teams above them. 100%, 100%. And I think I do think Everton have made really good signings. I think Natalie Bjorn, uh, Sweden... And at Avogad, you know, these are players that I, I was looking at us signing. And so, you know, they, they, they've done well. I do think I like her. And it was a signing I was thinking about um, when we first got promoted. But I think now, Tony Duggan, she, she's great. But I think she might just be a bit past it. She didn't do as well um, in Atletico Madrid this season. I, I'm I'm not fully convinced on her. I mean, she, she obviously be coming back to prove a point. Uh, she's used to Everton. She's played there before. Um, but other than that, other than the two Swedish girls, and maybe the Arsenal one is is good, and um, the one from Juventus, yeah, they're, they're the international quality players. But like you say, John, I I don't look at that anyone in their midfield and think, you know, Kenza Darley is better than Jackie Gronen or. Um, Graham is better than um, Bo Risa, not at all. And if I look at the centre backs, you know, Gabby George, good player. Like I said, Natalie Bajon, really good. But, you know, I still put Manny and Amelie up, up there as the, as the top two. And then full backs, Honor for me, one of the best in the league. And, you know, Hannah will be looking to, to, to prove the same alongside her. Yeah, I just think, yeah, we just need to add the, the, the depth up front. Because I think even Russo. Hansen and Leah. For me, Leah's the best winger, left winger in the in the league. Uh, Russo, if she stays fit, I think she can easily bang a lot of goals. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm with Catherine. You know, she's she sort of put that fire back in the monsters. Mm. Let's go and let's aim at City. Let's you know aim for the top. I mean, for me, I think City and Chelsea are that little level above, and then it's us and Arsenal, then it's Everton. But I think why not? Let's let's aim for it. I mean, I would. Uh, I know we're gonna probably. I'm probably gonna ruin your spot now, John. But I would go for fourth as long as we won a cup. I would. I. I just think because what's happened, uh, the bit of uncertainty. You know, I think with not having a manager, there's been a bit of, you know, players have been all uh, umming and ahhing over us. And I think, you know, we're signing. If when we sign players now, it's it's late. Whereas a lot of, a lot of the Everton players have been together. So I don't know if that's gonna have any negative impact I hope not um so I am just I think he needs a bit of time Mark but for me I think if we can can win a cup any cup FA Cup or or League Cup Conti Cup I think it'll be a successful season if we're finishing fourth still 
But then I think, yeah, we, we want to finish there. We want to be in the Champions League. I think every player's come in and said they want to be in the Champions League. Last season, we were so close. I basically see us in it. Everyone was booking their flights, already looking at where, who we can draw, you know. Let's go out to Kazakhstan. Let's go off to, to Spain. You know, we're ready. It's, the fan base is, is at that point where I think it would just elevate it again. Because like what Catherine said, people travel over. So this time they will go to them. And, you know, when we were in Norway for a pre-season game, we had like a record attendance for that for that team. So for me, I think us being in Europe just elevates us again and gets more people excited and interested in, in Man United and obviously women's football as a whole. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, no one's, no one's guaranteed it. You have to earn it. But, you know, I think definitely with Man United in the Champions League, Women's Champions League, it just add that extra spice and excitement, in my opinion. I think we've been through so much, haven't we, as a fan base uh, in the last couple of three months? Like, I think because, obviously, Casey left and then everything came out in the media about things behind the scenes, all of our top players left. Everson started making signings. We made no announcements whatsoever. We still had no manager. Everton made some more signings. Everton made signings that we wanted. All of a sudden, mm. I think a lot of United fans just like thought to themselves, and maybe us at some point as well, this is terrible, we're going to drop below fourth, we're going to go fifth, sixth, even lower. But I think now that we've got that stability, we've got that manager, and we can see where we have improved and where we would like to improve as well, I think, you know, we have got that hunger back and we have kind of, you know, we do look at our squad now and our manager compared to maybe the other top three, and we think, yeah, we could still compete. You know, I don't think we're favourites to get into the top three this year. Like what you said, um, Nat, you know, the jury's still out on a lot of things. I still think that should still be the aim. We should still be going there to, um, you know, try and aim for top three and get a cup. Absolutely. I think the moment where we kind of aim for fourth is where, you know, you start settling for fifth or sixth and you start going backwards. Mm. So for me, yeah, absolutely uh, push push for third. But as things stand, if you finish fourth, but I do think we need to get a good cup one as well to kind of keep that morale up, don't we? Um, Definitely. Catherine, just uh, some points on some other teams. And so, obviously, I've left that um, one on, on screen there. City, Bunny Shaw, um, joining there. That's, that's a great signing. Nastly, I know you're a big fan of Bunny Shaw. But what about yourself, Catherine, seeing um, a world class player come, another world class player come and join the WSL? Yeah, a, a great signing again on a, on a free as well. Um, Man City haven't really needed another forward because but they had Ellen White last, last season, but they didn't really have another out and out striker. And, and sometimes he would play Stanway in a false nine, which to be honest, I'm, I'm, I don't think it ever really works. I don't think that's her best position. I think she's better playing behind a centre forward. Um, I think I remember going to the art, they, they played Arsenal at home. And I think Ellen White started on the bench and then she came on and didn't obviously make an impact. Um, but yes, they definitely need another striker and, and she's a, a great addition. We'll learn off Ellen White as well. Um, and yeah, obviously you want to see exciting signings. They lost Sam Newey, who was you know, a big player for them last season. Obviously, Rose the bell um, didn't kind of take off as we maybe thought she would. Struggled with injuries, not really kind of getting in the team. But you know, you've got a, another centre forward coming in as well because they've lost Chloe Kelly, and she'll be out for most of the season. She contributed a lot of goals and assists. Um, you've got Lauren Hemp on one wing, so. Um, you don't know whether she might be getting pushed out to wide a little bit because they've not got Kelly, whether they'll change their, their setup from a 4 3 3 to a, a 4 you know, two, 2 behind a stretch centre forward. You know, it just depends how, how Taylor sets up and, and if they bring anyone else in as well. So they definitely needed to make that forward signing, as you say, because Kelly was such a huge player for them last season. Would you say between City and Arsenal who would pop out to the top three if, um, if one of them was to drop out? I think I think you would only because we don't know how Arsenal will do under the new manager. I think you would probably fancy City at the minute, but you know you don't know. You know Arsenal they, they might bring some more players in. He might he might you know it might click. Um, it's just very difficult to tell with new managers. Um, there's definitely more pressure on Gareth Taylor than there is um, and Man City than there is on Arsenal because obviously say he won the FA Cup last season, but you know for them they finished second. You know last few years not won the title for quite a while so and given you know the players that we've got the players they've brought in over the last few years you know if they miss out again and finish second you know it's not going to look great yeah catherine you just i mean what john said there and then just sort of what you're saying throughout there doesn't seem to be a lot of pressure on arsenal it seems they've lost top players as well you know it's not like they've 
they've retained their whole squad and they're just adding to it. You know, they lost Daniel van der Donk. I can't remember who else left, but uh, Jill Rod. Yes, they brought in um, uh, Manor, but, you know, Manor and Frieda, they, they, they brought in good players, but I think, you know, there's not there's they've not really added in the midfield, in my opinion, as, as much as probably what they had there before. Uh, and then obviously this this new manager had no experience in the WSL, but they seem to just sort of be going under the radar. No one's worried, everyone seems confident that they're just gonna finish because it it's only sort of United sort of trickling away, which which sort of opened the door back for them. Um and in a way, you could probably people might look at the seasons overall and say United were were neck and neck, or probably just a bit above Arsenal. What what do you think then of just, just generally of the Arsenal? Are you worried for them? Do you think people should be just as worried because people are sort of like Skinner did this in Orlando, but like you said, at least he's got that Birmingham knowledge. What I remember mean, you said United should be pushing for fair, but in your opinion, how do you see Arsenal season going? I, I, again, difficult to tell. Um... Obviously, Jordan Rob's getting that injury in pre season, wasn't mm. ideal. Um, so I think she's about six weeks. It could be more when you get up to match speed, especially when she's had her injuries in the past. Um, so that's a blow early on. Nikita Paris is a good signing because, uh, again, that WSL experience, we know what she can bring. Um, tying down the Williams into a new deal is important as well, you know, keeping that defense strong. So it's, yeah, again, it's difficult as, as we said before. Markson has got that WSL experience, whereas Arsenal aren't going to have that. And um, but I don't, I don't know. Is there more pressure on Mark Skinner than than there is on? Is there more pressure on United than than Arsenal? I don't know how you guys kind of see it. Yeah, I, that's how I see it. But at the same time, I see it as. I mean, I think it's partly through United. You know, United fans. United fans always demand the most. But it's a sort of a strange one, I think, from the media side. That there isn't a pressure on us. It seems sort of a given that the top three is going to be what it is. Um, maybe Everton will come forth and, and United, well, because of everything that's happened, Casey's left, so United are finished. That's the sort of perception that I'm hearing from other United fans now. Yes, maybe we did uh, perpetuate some of it, you know, at the start because it was an unsettling period when she left. But for me, I think, like you said, we should... should we can still finish third and it just seems to be no it's Everton now and United are, are out of the picture well I think United as we know with United they thrive they're going to thrive on people writing them off um that's the type of club they are um and as you say I think Mark having that WSL experience is going to be important which Jonas obviously hasn't hasn't got that for Arsenal um, but he's still going to be under pressure to, to to stay third and to to you know break into the top two as well because I think Arsenal there was a little bit of dissatisfaction with their supporters as well with a few things coming out about um, you know some of the the way that the players were working there was obviously that investigation with with the injuries that they had last season um, you guys suffered in a similar way with a lot of injuries picked up in training now, Arsenal obviously did a, you know did a long report on that. Um, but they do seem to be um, saying all the right things in terms of um, how much they want to support the women's team, and you know how, how they obviously do want to go back to to competing at the at the top and for trophies. But um, as you say, I think I, I don't know what Mark's going to come across as a very positive kind of manager. I don't know if he's the type of manager that's going to go in the dressing room and stick things up on the wall and say this is what so and so has been saying. Um, to get his team really riled up. I don't know if he's that type of guy. Um, I, I know I always remember um, it was John Herdman, who was the, um, I think he was New Zealand manager at the time, and he made some comments about England. And Hope Powell, who never really came across as someone that was really fiery, went in the dressing, England dressing room, put his comments up on the wall. I think they went out and beat them in, in the World Cup back in, in 2011, I think. So he, it, it just depends if what, what kind of manager he is. As I say, the interviews I've seen from him, he comes across as a really kind of positive guy. Um, but I think he's going to have to maybe come across as a little bit more of a rally team up kind of guy against, you know, really get his players fired up to actually, you know, go and compete with the teams above him. Um, Catherine, just looking back on this summer, um, what would be kind of your standout moments across the WSL, just like regarding the transfer window? Because to me, I don't know if, I don't know if it's just because I'm a United fan, but 
a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing on Twitter is mainly all United based. So obviously LJ leaving, um, obviously the manager change. Um, I think if Miedemar had gone, maybe we would probably talk a bit more about Miedemar. But I, I don't think, you know, there's, there's not been massive news. Maybe City uh, with Bunny Shaw and the Barcelona captain coming and joining. I think that's probably a big highlight. But generally, I think United seem to be in the news quite a bit. I mean, would you agree with that just me, like, only reading United stuff more than anything else? No, I, I would, I'd agree with that. I think a lot of it is because of the uncertainty around the manager and kind of the delays that it took. And and also, I think there's, there's just a lot of interest in United. I think you've got a big fan base, um, you know, that extends between the men's and the women's teams abroad. And, and you know, people get frustrated when, you know, the, you know, the signings aren't happening and managers aren't coming in. So... Um, no, I think, yeah, there has been a lot of interest at United, especially because of how kind of well they did last season, but how they were, you know, just kind of not quite able to get into the top three and that ambition to, to be in the Champions League. Um, just before we finish the show, I'd just like to know a little bit more about like the whole journalism side and how fans and journalists can like, work together. And I think we've done a cracking job uh, on social media throughout lockdown. I do think that, like, um, obviously we've relied on journalists a hell of a lot to get information and you know we know that like you appreciate the fans as well because obviously we obviously read your stuff and tweet, retweet your stuff as well and I think, I think there's a great relationship there I'm just wondering like what your kind of thoughts are on like the whole like um just like coming together really over lockdown because I do think um, that we have come a lot closer um journalists and fans but just wonder what your, what your thoughts are on that yeah, interesting. I think it's it's obviously unique. It's you wouldn't really kind of get that situation in in men's football, but I think as well with women's football, you have, you kind of have to appreciate that um, for a lot of years it was kind of fan driven. A lot of you know uh, in terms of coverage, you've got people like girls on the ball who used to you know travel around the country and tweet out you know tweet out scores, tweet out updates, and they've been doing that for years and years. I can remember being quite a young fan and they were doing that, and they're still going now. And you guys obviously doing. Um, doing your work, your promotion. Um, and it, you, you always have really passionate fans in women's football. And as I say, it's a lot of it's kind of been fan-driven in the past. So obviously the fans and the media kind of have to, to work together, but also recognise the work that fans have done in, in terms of promoting the women's game before there was, the, you know, the, the media coverage that we have now, because that's not always been there. Um, you know, we've got this Sky deal this year. Um, games haven't always been on. You know, TV. There's not always been match reports in papers. There's not always been articles about transfers. So, um, definitely, like, as you say, you know, the, there's a close relationship between fans and the media. And I think, as we saw in the Christmas period when we had that little controversial moment over Dubai and players going abroad and stuff like that, I think the fans and the journalists were quite united on that. Um, so, obviously, yeah, it's, it's it's hugely important in the women's game. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think we have a lot of journalists on here. I mean, all, everyone that we've always had on always wants to cut, you know, always welcome on. You know, we're, we always have a good chat because I think uh, we even had Adam on and he sort of talked about, well, he wants to do it because obviously we, we just read your articles and, you know, we sort of have driven it in a way. And I think Man United, especially when I started to watch it, there was no coverage. There was no, it wasn't on telly. So that's what made started to get me and get a couple of people up together and going down. And then we created a Twitter and we live, live tweeting games, you know, even during um, some games that we haven't been able to see and we still may manage to sort of live tweet it um, out uh, via the, the, the Supporters Club website. So I think, you know, it's always going to be there and I think fans are always going to be a vital part. I do enjoy having more people because I think now with the journalists, they sort of know, like, with United fans, we want transfer. We want to know what's happening. We want to know who our manager is. We want to know who the signings are before you sort of do it. So I think, you know, yourself, Emma, uh, sometimes Susie, Molly, you know, you're all putting information out and, and really appreciate it. Even this, like, Kia Simon, you just said it as you know at the, at the time. But it's then led to a debate. Do we want to do this? And it's debate has changed throughout the summer, you know, and now... It's gone from no, we don't want her to. Yeah, actually, I would really take her. So I think, you know, it's always it's always that. And I think the more people interact, the more people talk. You know, we've gone on the the men's show and just talked about 
the growth of it and how we saw it when we first joined. I think it's massively changed from, you know, when we were going down to Sheffield in the championship to, to now. I mean, look at Sheffield, they're in their own stadium now. And, you know, I think it's always changing. I think United got it wrong for a bit, you know, last year. They've admitted that. They're moving on. And I think some... People don't want to move on from that. They want to still talk about that. It will always be the case. People will always question Man United because I think, you know, the ownership, the way it's gone. But for me, it's a positive. I've got a manager in. It seems more like open, John. I don't know if you feel that, but you see him more pictures. You see him more yeah. things and different things. I feel, I sort of, sort of said to someone, it feels like I'm free because I'm seeing all this interaction and it's something that I've never had, you know. I mean, I want to big up Eva Manny and she, she just loves to, talk to fans and it's something that I it is you know people have talked about it like yeah that's what she does but never seen it before and I think that's what sort of yeah. has interested people like me and John who probably never watch women's football and they're so excited for it and they're just thinking the same as us and because they're just fans as well who want the best for us and you know I think journalists feel the same way as well. If, um, if I could just end the show just with one more question, and it's basically just like what we can do to kind of help journalists. Is there anything that you would like from fans or anything that you think fans do good that kind of helps grow the game or, or helps you guys write articles or anything like that? Anything that you see that's good or anything that you see fans do that maybe, you know, you, you probably don't like the, like, like, like the look of? Is there anything that you can think of there? At all? Um, I think it's just, as, as you say, I think it's always good for us to know what the fans want. And obviously, you know, you want to know the players that come in, transfers and stuff like that. But what kind of pieces you want to see, right, you know, interviews and stuff like that or more longer reads or, you know, that's always good to know because, you know, then whether people are going to read it and be interested in it or not. Um, especially for Especially for things like online because... Um, it's it's all about you know how you know that engagement and stuff like that. Um, so it's always good to know, you know get the fans' opinions and know what type of pieces they want to see, who they want to see speaking, whether they want it more player based, managers, even you know people higher up at the club and stuff like that. Go on, yeah. I think for me, yeah, I'm, I'm not even speaking for it. I'm speaking for myself now. Maybe people will say no, they don't want to hear this, but I love it when uh, they ask them, "What do you think of the fans? What do you think of the fan base? Yes. What do you think of the support in comparison to other WSL teams?" So I don't know. It makes you feel good when you go in week in week out and you hear them praising you, but you can tell they mean it. It's not sort of like the the, the strung out pieces. Oh, we love the fans. You know, it's it's real. It's 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 in depth. And I think United fans love all the players. I think that that's what I mean. Obviously, when Mark comes, the the There'll be um, hopefully a big, you know, press conference with everyone. And I suppose just his expectations, what he wants to see, what he sees as a long-term plan. Uh, I know he's, I think he's on a two-year deal, but, you know, does he want to be here long-term? Does he, you know, we want to be in the Champions League fans. So it's that, I've, you know, like I said, a lot of players have been saying that. So, you know, I suppose what what's he going to do to make sure that we're there, that these are the kind of things. And, um, yeah, but like I like just the whole connection between between so anytime I read an interview I always scroll to the last bit and like what do you think of the fans or something like that those, those are the little questions that I love the most but yeah I think as well Stuart has said their facilities I think it is upgrading but like I suppose where I suppose when Mark comes in what has changed since cases has there been improvements what does he think does he see more improvements how's he going to make sure they happen stuff like that um, one more question then, just from the comments uh, of the Bear. Thank you for joining us as always. Uh, if you could change one thing in the women's game, what would it be? What comes to mind? Do you want to answer that one, Catherine, before we shoot off? Um, good question. Maybe commentators from abroad getting people's names right, if you don't. <laughs> so, yeah. If we see yep. Sarkis, don't we? Go on, go on yeah. I'd say more... Friendly rivalry, but like, you know, I like Man City, Man United, I like Man United and I like it. I like that tension in the ground, especially. And then for me, I think I'd say more coverage, more coverage of every league, not just WSL. I want to see Kia Simon playing club football. I want to see Real Madrid playing Barcelona. I want it to be easy so I can just turn on my telly and it's there. Definitely that. Um, if it was me, if I could change one thing in the women's game, um... I just think just give the players the respect that they deserve, really. Um, even if you don't follow women's football, just kind of 
show them that respect and learn a little bit about them and even if it's just the names and positions just at least kind of know who you are if you're a united fan at least know who katie Tellem is you know she's our captain you know just, just kind of just like educate yourself a little bit even if you don't really want to follow them or watch the games or go to the game just at least learn a little bit about them that's probably like the one little thing for myself there um we come to the end of the show and sorry about the uh start of the show guys it's very very rare that it's actually my internet that goes down but because i was hosting it as well it's, it just kind of delay things a little bit but thank you Natalie for jumping on thank you Catherine for joining us as well I know that we've had this in the pipeline for three or four weeks we really do appreciate you coming on um if anybody wants to find you on Twitter or your articles where can they where can they do that um yeah so my, my Twitter is just my name as if it's there um as, as I say earlier pronounced um, Batty is like the ex leeds footballer but um looks like it should be pronounced Bat but uh yeah you can find me on Twitter under, under that name handle Thank you, Catherine. Um, plans for the rest of the week then, that's So it's Thursday today, it's a Friday fan forum. Saturday, uh, we've got the Ben and Matt show. But we have got a pre record, haven't we? We're going out and that's uh, for Sunday. Sunday. Do, you kind of, do you want to just don't, don't mention the name just yet? It's a bit of a secret. Um, we'll just touch on it. Someone who I've known since 2018, they're a very good person. They're very big into development football, youth football. Um, they've been an assistant in the championship. They're now uh, coaching their own side. Uh, good person, check it out someday, you'll love it, a lot of talk about, you know, like youth football in general, Man United, their club now, different things, championship, how it's grown, so yeah, John, I'm speaking to you, go check it out, thank you guys. Thank you everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow, bye-bye.